I'm honored to be able to speak with you about this very important question of what is being planned for your wonderful island and for the planet at this time. I've had a long career working in public health and environmental policy and uh, for many years worked in the government. I was approved by the US Senate for a presidential appointment under President Clinton. And I was a member of the team awarded the Nobel Peace Prize with Al Gore in 2007 for my work as a lead author on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So it's a real pleasure to be able to talk with you today about this issue of 5G and what's happening in the world because it actually has profound implications for climate change that have not generally been recognized. And I think that you are in a unique position to pay attention to that set of problems. If we look at what we know about uh, 5G and about non-ionizing radiation. As you will have heard from Mr. Clegg and others, we know that cancer is just one of the issues that has been identified with non-ionizing radiation. Now, you'll hear people say that non-ionizing radiation is weak. And you know what? They're right. It is weak. But its biological impact has nothing to do with its power, but with its frequency and with the pulsed nature of the signal so that it's very erratic. And the erratic signal over millions of times of exposure throughout the lifetime of our children is why we are very concerned about its capacity to damage DNA, to impair memory, to in fact reduce sperm count in men who carry phones in their pockets. And all of that information can be found in my TEDx talk for those of you who are interested to know more about it. One of the things that has been established through nine years of field study of trees uh, in uh, Germany is that radio frequency radiation damages trees. And if you look carefully at the image before you, you'll see that on the healthy side of the tree, the exposures are almost 10 times less than on the unhealthy side of the tree. And it's almost as though the tree is trying to move away from the antenna located right in the far left side of the image before you. And this peer reviewed publication made clear those that were nearest to the mobile phone base stations showed the most damage the closer the tree was. 5G is an energy hog. The reason 5G is an energy hog is because although it may increase efficiency, it is, depends entirely on the world purchasing billions of more new devices, many of which are questionable use. I mean, do you really need your washing machine to be able to talk to your refrigerator or your refrigerator to decide when to order food for you? There's a lot of questions that are being raised by energy economists. And as you see in this graph here, that the evolution of global energy consumption for digital devices is exponentially going to increase. Um, and if you look carefully at these uh, lines, you will see the worst case scenario um, has more than a doubling of energy consumption from this sector of digital devices by 2025 compared to 2010. Now that's a huge increase and it's what's called the rebound effect. <clears throat> the increase in demand will swamp any improvement in efficiency. In addition, you have a massive environmental footprint because you'll need millions of new antennas, which require sometimes precious metals to be put in them and billions of new wireless devices, which will create tremendous amounts of electronic device of waste. Electronic waste is a huge problem. Shipping it off your island is one approach to it, but we simply are not able to keep up with the demand. Now, there are studies on insects, and this has been done by a group of very talented engineers in Switzerland, where they've taken an, and made a model, three-dimensional model of a honeybee. And they've shown that just a 10% change in power density in the frequencies that will be used in 5G could lead to an increase of absorbed power of up to threefold. And this in turn could lead to changes in insect behavior. And I should add, you'll see here on this image, that 5G is what 24 gigahertz will entail. And contrary to the idea that this is nothing other than an airport scanner, let me tell you, you do not want to be in an airport scanner for 24 hours a day. And if we have 5G, it will be everywhere all the time. And the demand will only grow. Birds and wildlife also are showing effects of this non-ionizing 
radiation. And many studies have been published, some by Albert Manville, who was formerly the chief of the US Fish and Wildlife Service uh, for this topic of birds and wildlife impacts. And he has documented effects on breeding, nesting and survival, and the ability of birds to navigate. There's something called the magnetoreceptor, a protein behind the eye of all navigating animals that have been studied so far. And this is interfered with by the increase in non-ionizing radiation. So bird health is affected as well. Uh, finally, um, we have to ask ourselves, well, if there's all these problems, how come the United States isn't doing more? And unfortunately, as was documented five years ago by a Harvard University researcher, Norman Alster at the time, the FCC remains a captured agency. The current and past heads of the FCC come from and will probably go back to the telecommunications industry. And while it's important to have knowledgeable people who are FCC commissioners, there are none of them right now, not one, that is truly independent of this industry. And as Nor Alster said, this industry looks like tobacco today in their tactics that they have been employing to get information to people. What you see before you now is a screenshot for re from a recent French documentary on public television there called 5G, The Wave of Doubt. And translations are going to be made available soon. It's currently available in French. And it's important to understand that the ICNRP standard is actually not followed by half of the world today. They have more stringent standards, as you will see shortly, than what ICNRP has recommended. The International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection is a small club of self-appointed and self-monitored experts by invitation only. They, many of them have close industry ties. Several of them are sponsored directly by industry funding for their research, as you saw in the short documentary from Investigate Europe. So what I'd like to say in conclusion is that I worked at the National Academy of Sciences for 10 years, and I worked on the problem of passive tobacco at a time when people were smoking on airplanes. Some of you, like me, may be old enough to remember that. And at that time, we worked hard to look at the independent data on tobacco smoke, and it took many years before we were able to publish our results, not because the science was uncertain, but because the pressure from the tobacco industry was so great at that time that we were unable to get good work out in a timely way. And as you may recall, the effort to reduce tobacco in public spaces didn't really go globally until the 1990s. And that really is a tragedy for public health because there are millions of avoidable deaths that have occurred because smoking was encouraged for so long. And climate is another issue of that sort as well, where the climate deniers are very well organized and they would have you think that we don't know enough to do anything now, when in fact the no regrets policy, precautions can be taken as the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has said. But let's ask the question, if the climate is so, so important um, for us all, what are we doing with 5G? And the biggest improvement that you can make for your island is to go with fiber optic cable. This will be safer, it will prevent cybersecurity threats, and it will reduce exposure to non-ionizing radio frequency radiation, which is a human carcinogen that can damage DNA and damage sperm. And I turn you over now to my colleague, Theodora Scarato, who is Executive Director of Environmental Health Trust, where I am the President. Thank you. So at Environmental Health Trust, I work on maintaining a database of policy moving forward on wireless and electromagnetic radiation. This November, the State of New Hampshire Commission on 5G released 15 recommendations to the governor of New Hampshire after a year-long intensive investigation where they interviewed numerous experts, including scientists of the National Toxicology Program, to consider the health impacts uh, that are posed by 5G. The recommendations that they made include a resolution to U.S. Congress to require that the FCC commission an independent health study and a review of the safety limits, to engage agencies to develop radio frequency safety limits that protect trees, plants, birds, insects, and pollinators because the current FCC limits, and in fact any limits that have been set by governments, none of them were set or designed to protect our natural environment or wildlife. 
engage the FCC to do an environmental impact statement require 5G structures be labeled and radio frequency radiation measured, establish radio frequency radiation free zones in commercial and public buildings, use wired connections, not Wi-Fi, in libraries and schools, and that the health agency should educate on how to minimize radio frequency exposure with multimedia public education efforts, especially for pregnant women and babies. Oregon State passed a bill investigating the impacts of wireless, especially to children. Resolutions have been passed in Hawaii County, Farragut, Tennessee, Easton, Connecticut, calling to halt 5G. There are several city ordinances restricting the deployment of 5G in small cells. So, for example, in Los Altos, California, the installation of small cell towers on public utility easement in residential neighborhoods is prohibited, and there are 500-foot setbacks for schools, and we have links to all of those city ordinances on our website. Now, over 20 countries recommend people, especially children, reduce exposure to cellular radiation, especially to their brain. And what you're seeing here is the back of a bus in Cyprus, where they have an educational campaign for parents to protect their children. And the translation of this poster is, don't irradiate me, learn how to protect me. Wireless has actually been removed from the neonatal units of Archbishop Macario's hospital, and the country has a large-scale multimedia public education program running in the country. Now, many countries have limits for cell tower exposures, which are far lower than FCC or ICNRP limits. And here are some examples of countries which have more stringent limits in regards to the 900 megahertz electric field. However, the wireless industry is stating that in order to deploy 5G, those countries with strict limits need to loosen, weaken their limits in order to fully deploy 4G and 5G in the country. Industry has been working hard to have countries actually change their limits, and they've been successful in Poland and Lithuania, who now change their limits to allow more radiation to accommodate 5G. There is now a campaign by industry to get Russia to change their more stringent limits as well. In Italy, over 600 municipalities have passed resolutions to halt 5G until scientific research demonstrates safety, especially for long-term exposures. We have a page at ehtrust.org with international policy to halt 5G across the world, and these are just a few examples. In addition to the 600 cities in Italy, there's a growing list of municipalities from the United Kingdom to Croatia, Ireland, France, Bulgaria, Germany, Cyprus, Bulgaria, Australia, where they have resolutions to halt 5G. Kalamata, Greece was a test city for 5G, but once the people understood the health and environmental impacts posed by 5G and small cell densification, they reversed course and decided not to continue with the company. Several countries have launched safety reviews. However, the outcome has been the echoing of industry, in fact, because the panels were industry tied. They concluded that non-ionizing radiation has not been proven to be harmful. However, the Switzerland Parliament, after their review, refused to weaken their stringent radio frequency radiation limits. And in France, the health authority has a comprehensive research investigation that's been going on for months, and that's going to be coming out next year. We also document on our website the hundreds of scientists and doctors around the world issuing resolutions to halt 5G and protect the public and the environment. We have documentation on the environmental organizations that have issued reports such as one of the largest nature conservation associations in Germany, which found the majority of peer-reviewed studies found effects to insects in a recent study that just came out in September. Wireless companies warn their shareholders of risk, but not their customers nor residents. Crown Castle's annual report states, if radio frequency emissions from wireless handsets or equipment on our communications infrastructure are demonstrated to cause negative health effects, potential future claims could adversely affect our operations, costs, or revenues. We currently do not maintain any significant insurance with respect to these matters. In fact, most wireless companies have similar statements on their annual reports as well. And they don't have insurance because insurance authorities rank non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation and 5G as high risk. 
and insurance companies generally have an exclusion as they don't cover damages related to non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation. 5G in the Internet of Things is not a sustainable technology. Pollution, human rights abuses, and environmental destruction have been documented at every stage of the life cycle of a device, from the conflict minerals to the inhumane worker conditions and toxins in manufacturing harming workers, to the radiation exposure to children, the public, trees, birds, and bees, to the electronic e-waste. We need to use technology responsibly instead of rushing into something that hundreds of scientists are warning us about. You may have heard that because 5G only gets one sixty quarter inch or a few millimeters into the skin, it can have no biological effect. Well, whoever has told you that doesn't understand basic biology. It is now understood by this image taken from a 2019 peer reviewed article in a clinical microbiology review that the skin associated lymphoid tissue is critically important to the immune system and that things that affect the skin affect the entire body. Think of how well you feel when after the rain you go outside and have a little sunlight on your faces. It affects your whole body. The same thing is true. The skin exposure can affect uh, keratinocytes and the epidermis, which is at the so surface of the skin, which then infect the Langerhans cells that can in turn affect major histocompatibility complex, interleukins, tumor necrosis factor, and other things that affect how well your immune system functions. As an example of the ability of the skin to resonate with 5G, this is work done by Dr. Benny Shai in his laboratory at Hebrew University with optical coherence tomography, where you see within from the epidermis, the skin duct, the sweat ducts go down into the skin where they have an effect throughout the body. The sweat ducts resonate like small helical antennas to absorb and reflect that radiation. Thinner skin will absorb more, thicker skin will absorb less, and this work has been published in peer-reviewed journals showing that the skin does have a biological response to millimeter wave technology. Millimeter waves are intensely absorbed into the skin, as you can see from these illustrations from the work of Professor Paul Benny Shai, reproduced here. More information can be found on our website about this. Now, I want to turn next to some modeling work that has been done based on open source information that can be accessed around the world of existing networks in Austin, Texas. And what you see on the left in the red circles is the existing coverage of the LTE. And what you see on the right is the proposed deployed 5G network. And the bottom line is to show you that there will be much more dense exposure to radiation throughout the system. You can turn off your phone, but you can't turn off the network. This, this is what it looks like in another density map made by these researchers published in the IEEE World Forum on 5G. What they have shown is that 5G infrastructure, when combined with existing infrastructure, will create levels of radiation that cannot yet be classified as safe for the public. And they urge a rethinking of exposure in 5G networks with which we completely and heartily agree. Just to be clear, when 5G is implemented, outdoor exposures will increase exponentially as indicated here in this mapping of the power density that will take place with a fully deployed 5G network for the town of Austin, Texas. This is why once fully employed, there will be no way to escape exposure to the 24 seven operations of the 5G system that will be required. If you'd like more information, please go to our website at ehtrust.org and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have 